So the first thing we did, recognizing that the qualifiers that we had all represented AND conditions, we decided to move line type, again which represented that rate type, to a pricing attribute. So we mapped a new pricing attribute called rate type, just copied the definition that we had for the qualifying attribute. We got rid of that qualifier on all of the price lists. So now what happens when a given item uh, and line type are evaluated, the number of list lines that the engine is going to look through is really limited to the number of states in that operating unit. So rather than having an item that appears on 200 to 250 price lists, now we have the combination of item and rate type defined at the line level, and that's going to limit us to the states within that particular operating unit, which typically was 10 to 15, in some cases even smaller. The second thing that we did was take the qualifying to pricing attribute step one further, and we decided to move state down to a pricing attribute as well. So now what happens is, if we have a given state and rate type and item, that will get us immediately to one, maybe two, maybe three list lines that the engine will process. So we've gone from having state and rate type as qualifiers. The engine might select upwards of 250 lines. Now that first query is going to grab maybe two or three. Now the one issue with that from a maintenance standpoint is that every time a new line is added on a price list, the user has to make sure that that state pricing attribute is defined. We did take care of that though with the personalization feature. Uh, if you recall from the screenshot, we had a very specific naming structure to the price list. And so what we did was when the pricing attribute screen was opened, we automatically added for the user uh, the state pricing attribute. And then they would add either the rate type or any other conditions that may be needed. So again, in this situation, by moving the two attributes down and providing a little automation on maintaining those attributes, the pricing engine to price a thousand line order would select, you know, ideally a thousand lines as opposed to upwards of 250,000 lines. And here's an example of what those price list lines look like. So we removed the state and rate type qualifiers. Uh, here for this given item number, product number CW, we see the pricing attribute where the uh, line type uh, refinances move down to the line level. And then the second shot shows the remittance state qualifier, which again, qualifying attribute, we redefined it as a pricing attribute. And this is the data that we created a personalization for uh, to automatically add that in there if it wasn't already there. So that's something that was on the priceless side. The next example will be with modifiers. Again, same, uh, same company. In this business, the title insurance company sold their policies both through direct and indirect agents. And this application, uh, the business suite that we implemented was for their indirect business. So an agent would sell uh, one of this company's policies. The agent would keep a portion of the gross premium for themselves and the balance would be actually due to the title insurance company. Well, the way we modeled that was the list price was the gross premium and then we had to apply a discount to get the amount that was actually owed to the title insurance company. The discount structure varied from region to region. Probably the most complex uh, was in one particular region where they had this notion of charge type. Uh, at its simplest, the charge type was determined by the type of policy being sold and the rate type that was being used, the line type. And in some cases, additional information was required to determine the exact rate type that would be used, which would then define the discount. And in this particular region, uh, they had seven rate types defined, and with approximately 5,000 agents, we were looking at a total of 35 to 40,000 modifier lines because each agent might have their own plan and the main information was maintained uh, for each agent specifically. Initial configuration was to create a charge type pricing attribute where we had a custom function that actually evaluated what that attribute should be. The modifier lines for each agent use the product definition of all items. Well, the problem with that was, as I said before, 5,000 agents, uh, five to seven charge types. The engine, when looking for adjustments, when looking for modifiers to select, again, recalling that it grabs the lines first, 
with 25 or 1,000 or so lines that say all items. Every time a line was priced, it grabbed 25,000 modifier lines before it did any other processing. So what we did here is an example of using the product context. So rather than create a new pricing attribute associated to the line, it made more sense for us from a maintenance standpoint to move that charge type to a product context. So what we did was we, we moved that definition, we used the same function that mapped the attribute when it was a non-product attribute. Uh, we changed all the modifiers from all items to use a specific charge type. And we also considered, uh, and this hasn't been done yet, but we're actually considering moving customer uh, down as a pricing attribute on the lines. Much the same way we did with the price list where you move state, uh, we've been considering moving customer down as a pricing attribute to further refine the issue. So here's an example of the modifier after we've made the changes. So what you can see is in the product attribute we have a new value called charge type. The description over on the right, although it represents product description, it's a little bit of a misnomer because it's not exactly a product that's being chosen. Charge type is derived based on the product, but it's also based on other characteristics of the transaction at the time. Again, any attribute can be defined in that product context, and it doesn't necessarily have to be just a product that shows in there. So what happens for us is the maintenance is easier. Now the modifier is very clear as to what it does, as opposed to having all items and after clicking through additional attributes. And in addition, we get much greater selectivity when modifier lines are selected to apply a specific discount for a line.